Welcome to section 7.4, day one, operations with radical expressions. Today's objectives are to simplify square roots by using the product and quotient properties of square roots, and to simplify sums and differences of radical expressions. So radical expressions. Radical expressions contain a radical such as a square root, and we've seen it before, and the radicand is the number or variable inside the radical symbol. So here you show, this is a review I hope, you have the radical on the outside and you have the radicand on the inside. So a radicand is in simplest form under these three conditions. We can have no perfect square factors other than one. We can have no fractions inside the radicand. And we can have no radicals in the denominator. Those are our three conditions. We're gonna be working with those the next couple of days. So the product property of square roots. For any non-negative real numbers a and b, the square root of a, b, is equal to the square root of a times the square root of b. So that's in words, and below is what it looks like algebraically in symbols. So the square root of a, b equals the square root of a times the square root of b. If a is greater than or equal to zero and b greater than or equal to zero. That Stipulation is put in there right now. We are only going to be taking square roots of positive numbers. We are not going to look at the imaginary number system yet. All we're dealing with this year is the real number system. So here's some examples. The square root of 36 can be broken down into the square root of 4 times the square root of 9, which then is the square root. Then we can break that radical up, and we have the square root of 4 times the square root of 9, which is 2 times 3, which is 6. And if you look at the square root of 36, most of you should hopefully know that the square root of 36 is 6. And this is showing how this works. The square root of 80 is not a perfect square, so we have to break it down into perfect squares and non-perfect squares. So we break it into the square root of 16 times 5. 16 is the largest perfect square that divides into 80 evenly. Now we can split the radical up, and we have the square root of 16 times the square root of 5. And then we take the square root of our perfect squares. And the square root of 16 is 4, so we get 4 times the square root of 5. And then when we're done, we don't need that multiplication symbol in there. We can just have 4 square roots of 5. This is what we're going to be doing. We're going to break our radicals up into perfect squares and non-perfect squares. And we're going to take the square roots of the perfect squares to simplify. So here we want to simplify these radicals. Now, hopefully recall that our perfect squares we're going to be looking at to see if we can put into these are 1, 4, 9, 16, 25, 36, 49, 64, 81, and 100. So these are what we're going to see. We're going to see what the largest number is that's a perfect square that will divide into these. So the first one we have is the square root of 54. And the largest perfect square we can put into there is 9. So we can break this into the square root of 9 times 6. Then we can break this up with our radical to become the square root of 9 times the square root of 6, and we take the square root of 9, which is 3, and we have 3, and we have the radical 6. So we have 3, radical 6. There are no perfect squares that divide evenly into 6, so we are simplified. We do the same thing with 180. We're going to see which is the largest perfect square that divides evenly into 180. And if we go through our list, 36 will divide into 180 evenly. This becomes the square root of 36 and times 5. We can then break the radical up into the square root of 36 times the square root of 5. And this becomes 6 square roots of 5. And no perfect squares divide evenly into 5, because 5 is a prime number. So let's say you didn't know that 36 goes into 180. Well, let's look at numbers that we know would go into it. Well, 9 divides into 18 nicely. So we could have, it just takes longer, we could have broke this up into the square root of 9 times 20. 
And then we look at, is there a perfect square that goes into 20? And there is. 4 will divide evenly into this. This is the same as the square root of 9 times 4 times 5. And then we can break this into our perfect squares, which is 9 square root of 4 square root of 5. And we get 3 times 2 square root of 5, which is the same thing as what's above because 3 times 2 is 6. So we want to get the largest number that will go in, the largest perfect square that will divide into our radicand. But if we don't find the largest, we will still get the same answer if we do all the steps properly. We just keep looking to see if we can divide into a perfect square into our radical numbers. So like the one I did, we had square root of 9 times square root of 20. Well, we can look to see if another perfect square goes into 20 and 4 goes into 20, so we break it down further. So as long as we do that, we will still get the same answer. And I do want to see you guys breaking these down into perfect squares and non-perfect squares. Some of you will have a calculator that will show you how to do this automatically, but I need to see that you can break these down. On a quiz or a test, there are certain calculators you cannot use because they simplify radicals for you. All right, next we have number three, the square root of 90, x cubed y to the fourth. Now we have variables. So we're only be working with square roots right now. So what we want to do when we break down variables is any multiples of two for the exponents is a perfect square for the variable. So let's see what that looks like. We have the square root of 90, x cubed, y to the fourth. So what I want to do is break this down. We look at what is the perfect square that goes into 90, and it is 9. So we get the square root of 9 times 10. No perfect squares go into, goes into 10. Then we look at x cubed. We want to take out even powers out of this. So x, squared become, x cubed becomes x squared times x. And then y to the fourth, it's an even power. So this is y to the fourth. Now we're going to take our perfect squares and break this down. We have the square root of 9 is a perfect square. I'm going to work my way across. x squared is perfect y to the fourth is perfect. And then we have left over that's not perfect is 10 and that lone x. When we take the square root of nine, we get three. When we take the square root of x squared, so we're taking the square root, a couple of different ways you can look at this. When we take x squared, we're taking the square root, if we write it as an exponential expression, we'd have x squared to the 1 half power. If you multiplied 1 half times 2, you would get x to the first. So we're taking the square root of x squared. It's just x. One of the ways I look at it, this is one way, is you have x squared raised to the 1 half. Another way to look at it is we're taking the square root, divide that even exponent by 2. 2 divided by 2 is 1. We take y to the fourth. 4 divided by 2 is 2. So we take the square root of y to the 4th, we get y squared. And then we have left over in the radical 10x. So we get to this. 3xy squared times the square root of 10x. So let's do the last one. We're going to do the same thing. We're going to break it down. We're going to try to divide out our perfect squares first. The perfect square that goes into 32, the largest one, is 16. And that's 16 times 2 is 32. And then we have r squared is a perfect square. k to the fourth is a perfect square. And we have t to the fifth, which we can take t to the fourth out of it, and then leaving just one t left, or just t to the first. I don't need to put the one there for the exponent, but I did just so you can see that 4 plus 1 is 5. I'm going to rearrange this so all my perfect squares are together. This is 16, r squared, k to the fourth, t to the fourth. And then our other radical is going to have our non-perfect squares in it, which is 2t. And then we're going to take our perfect squares. The square root of 16 is 4. Square root of r squared, 2 divided by 2 is 1, so just r. k to the fourth, 4 divided by 2 is k squared. Same with t to the fourth, divide that exponent by two, you get t squared, and we have square root of two t. 
So there is my answer for simplified form for our k squared t squared and then the square root of 2t. So this is how we do this when we're simplifying radicals. Simplified radical form means we cannot have any more perfect squares inside the radical symbol. So the radicand itself cannot contain any perfect squares that divide out of it. Always try to find the largest number that will divide out. Um, when you're dealing with exponents, take out even powers of the exponents when we're dealing with square roots. Next thing we're going to look at is adding and subtracting radicals. And radicals are treated just like variables. To be a like radical, it must have the same radical and the same radicand. So in this first one on the left, we have the square root of 5. They're both, it's a square root with 5 as a radicand. Then we have 3 square root of 5. And again, we have a square root and the radicand is 5. This would be the same as having like x plus 3x. And all we do is look at the coefficients and add or subtract them. So we have 1 square root of 5 plus 3 square root of 5. It equals 4 square root of 5. If we have 4 square root of 7 minus 3 square root of 7, we take the 4 minus 3 because we have the same radical. We get square root of 7. The unlike radical. You'll notice on the right we have the square root of 12 and the square root of 3. They are not like radicals. So at this point we cannot add them together. We're going to see later how we can get them together by getting like radicals. Then we have the square root of 6 minus the square root of 10. Again, we have the square root of 6 and square root of 10. They are not the same numbers in the radical symbols, so we cannot combine them. And then we have 6 plus the square root of 6. And 6 is not a radical. The square root of 6 is, so we cannot combine them. They are not like terms. Like I said, we treat radicals like we treat variables. They must be the same to be able to add or subtract them together. Here it says simplify each sum or difference. We have two square roots of five minus four square roots of five. They both have the square root of five in them. So all we have to do is work with the coefficients. We have two minus four, which is negative two. And the square root of five comes along because we have negative two square roots of five. For number two, we have three square roots of six plus two square roots of six. They both have the radical square root of six. So we can add the coefficients together and get five square roots of six. Number three, we have five square roots of two minus square root of 32. When you look at this right now, we do not have like radicals, but we need to see if we can get like radicals. And we look at the square root of 32 and see if we can simplify it. And we can. So we have five square roots of two, and the square root of six, uh, 32 breaks down into the square root of 16 times 2. So we have 5 square root of 2 minus the square root of 16 times the square root of 2. And then we can take the square root of 16. So we have 5 square root of 2 minus 4 square root of 2. Now we have like radicals, so we can add these together. And 5 minus 4 is 1. So we're left with the square root of 2. So sometimes we'll get expressions that do not have like radicals, but we can create like radicals by simplifying one of the radicals. In number 4, we have 3 square root of 3 minus square root of 75. Again, these are not like radicals, but we want to see if we can pull a perfect square root of 75. And we can. And when we do this, we get the square root of 25 times 3. 25 times 3 is 75. And we will break this down to the square root of 25, square root of 3, and then we have 3 square roots of 3 minus 5 square roots of 3. 3 minus 5 is negative 2 square root 3. So this is how we simplify sums and differences. If we have like radicals at the beginning, we just combine the coefficients. And if we don't have like radicals, we want to see if we can create like radicals by taking a perfect square out of one of them and simplifying, like we did on numbers 3 and 4. So here's a couple more we have to do. We have 2 square roots of 8 plus the square root of 200. Again, we are going to see if we can simplify our radicals. And both of these radicals on the number 1 can be simplified. Because we can pull out a perfect square out of 8, and that would be the square root of 4. And out of 200, we can pull out the square root of 100. If it lets me write nicely. 
And then we're going to simplify the radicals. So the square root of 4 is 2. So we have 2 times 2 square root of 2 plus 10 square root of 2. And then we have 2 times 2, which is 4. We get 4 square root of 2 plus 10 square root of 2. We now have like radicals. They're both square root of 2. And we have 4 plus 10, which is 14 square roots of 2. For number 2, we have 10 square roots of 5 minus 5 square root of 20. Uh, there is nothing we can simplify with the square root of 5, so it stays as is. But we can pull out the perfect square of 4 out of 20. And this becomes the square root of 4 times 5. And 10 square root of 5 minus 5. And the square root of 4 is 2. And we're left with the square root of 5. And then we get 10 square root of 5 minus 5 times 2 is 10 minus 10 square root of 5. And we get 0. 10 minus 10 is 0. And 0 times the square root of 5 is 0. I would like you guys to all try number 3. So pause the video, try number 3, and see if you get the same thing I do. So for number 3, we want to get or like radicals. So we can break the square root of 18 into the square root of 9 times 2. We can break 32 into the square root of 16 times 2. And I will show you all the steps. So we have 5 square root of 9 square root of 2 plus 4 square root of 16 square root of 2. Still find the radicals. We have square root of 9 is 3. Then the square root of 16 is 4. So we have 4 times 4 square root of 2. This is 15 square root of 2 plus 16 square root of 2. Now we have like radicals, we can add them together. 15 plus 16 is 31 square roots of 2. So when we simplify, make sure you get like radicals and then combine any like radicals you have. That is all for section 7.4 day one. Thank you for watching and have a nice day.